Hi everyone. Well, it's such a privilege for me to be able to contribute to our New Ground Sunday. I get so excited when I imagine you all there in your churches, gathered together, gathered to Jesus, and also somehow we're gathering together as a New Ground family today. And um, I just love this idea of all being together. So a big hello to you, a big hello to my friends in Piracicaba and Erasmopolis in Brazil and to everyone in the Netherlands and to those in Liverpool and Leon and everywhere else. It's brilliant to join together. I want to just take a few minutes today to bring a few thoughts from the verses that we had read from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I recognize that for some people um, today watching this, you're very familiar with what New Ground is all about. You've been to the conferences, you've read the magazine, you listen to the podcast, you've got the t-shirt and the souvenir mug, you're fully on board with everything that New Ground is. But I also guess some people are watching this message today and this may be your first ever time in church or maybe you've just been going along to this church for a few weeks and you've heard of New Ground but you're not kind of sure what it is or how it all fits together. It was brilliant to hear from Dave and Liz earlier to hear of all that they've been up to, um, but maybe you're sitting there and you're hearing Dave talk about being an apostolic family of churches and you're thinking, well, what does that really mean? Well, I think these verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 really help us understand and unpack how important and how exciting it is to be part of a family of churches together on a mission. So, so let's delve in. 2 Corinthians, it was written by the Apostle Paul to a church in the city of Corinth, which was a Greek city, a wealthy, pagan, hedonistic city. And in this section of his second letter to them, Paul is encouraging this local church in Corinth to get involved in financially supporting Christians who are struggling in Jerusalem. We know as we read other bits of the Bible, if you read like Romans chapter 15, that Paul had planned to go to Jerusalem and to take a financial gift to the church there to help alleviate poverty. So Paul was making an appeal to the churches that he had established and planted and laid foundations. He was making an appeal to see if they would give a gift to support and encourage the Christians who were living back in Jerusalem. So Paul's inviting the Corinthians to get involved in this and to encourage them, he um, wants to inspire them by another church's example. He says, I want you to know about the churches in Macedonia. So that's like cities like Thessalonica and Philippi, where we know Paul wrote letters and visited as well. He says to the Corinthians, I want you to know what the guys up in Macedonia are doing, how they've got on board with this appeal to help the Christians back in Jerusalem. In just a few verses here, we begin to get a sense to capture some of the atmosphere and the culture of New Testament church life. We, we can see here how different churches are relating together through the apostolic ministry of Paul and his team. We've got Jerusalem and we've got Corinth and we've got the churches in Macedonia, Philippi and Thessalonica. And these cities they are hundreds of miles apart. I mean, Corinth is like 800 miles from Jerusalem. Philippi and Thessalonica, they're even further away. In an age before email and Zoom and aeroplanes and the combustion engine, these are vast distances. So what connected all these churches together? Well, what connected them was the apostolic ministry of Paul and his team. He laid foundations in these churches, which meant when the guys in Jerusalem were struggling, he could come to the church in Corinth and say, guys, can you help? Um, can you get on board with this? Maybe we can do something together that will make a difference for the church in Jerusalem. Maybe somehow, even though our churches are separated by hundreds of miles, by geography and by culture, maybe together in partnership and on mission together, maybe together we can support and encourage the church in Jerusalem. Maybe we can be a family of churches that actually makes a difference together in the world. You see, what bound these different churches together in the New Testament was Jesus, the gospel, and in this example, the apostolic ministry of Paul and his team. Now, the churches in Macedonia, 
they didn't need much encouragement to get involved. Paul says, we want you to know about the grace that God gave them to get on board with this. I mean, they were fully signed up. Um, they wanted to support the local, the global church through Paul's ministry. And even though they were going through a real trial themselves, we read that, we see in verse two that their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. The churches in Macedonia were facing massive pressure and massive persecution and trial, but it didn't stop them wanting to be part of something bigger beyond themselves. I recognise that in our own family of churches, um, churches are facing trials of many kinds. Um, the post-pandemic world, the economic crisis that we're living through, um, all creates a challenging context for church and mission. And when that happens, it can be so easy to kind of like just batten up the hatches, just think we're just going to get through this season, we're just going to focus on home base, prioritise the local church. But what I love as I read these verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 is that even though the Macedonians were under pressure and persecution themselves, they still longed to play their part in something bigger than just their own location. Paul says they gave beyond their ability and they didn't have to be persuaded. If you look at verse 4, he says they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the Lord's people. The churches in Macedonia were like, of course we want to help. Of course we want to get involved in playing a role in supporting the church in Jerusalem. Of course we want to get caught up in global mission. Of course we want to serve what God is doing across the earth. We don't want to just be independent and focus on ourselves. We're pleading with you, Paul. Include us. Involve us. Let us contribute. Let us play a part. What a, what a beautiful heart for a local church to have to engage in kingdom ministry as part of this wider family of churches that we read about in the New Testament. Through their relationship with Paul, who is an apostle to them, they were able to be part of what God was doing in Jerusalem hundreds and hundreds of miles away. Guys, this is kind of what it means to be part of an apostolic family of churches. Somehow we, in our local churches, we get to be involved and part of what God is doing across the world. We get to be involved. We get to contribute. Through Dave and Liz and the apostolic team that I and others are part of, we can feel connected and we can contribute to church planting endeavours in the Netherlands, like the new plant that's happening in Rotterdam. Somehow in South East England, in small market towns like Sevenoaks and Oxted, we can be connected to what God is doing in Brazil and the churches that are part of our family there. Somehow the church up at the borders of Scotland can be connected to Berlin and Brussels and even Burgess Hill because we're part of the same family together. So how does that actually work in practice? Well, Paul gives us a bit of a roadmap in these verses Again, talking about the churches in Macedonia, he says in verse 5 that they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. First of all, Paul says, we give ourselves to the Lord. In our local churches, in our families, in our work, in our communities, we give ourselves to the Lord. We put God first. We put Jesus first in all things. Local churches that are made up of individual members who have made a decision to give themselves fully to the Lord. I wonder, have you done that today? Have you given yourself fully to Jesus? Have you said to him, you are my Lord, you are my rescuer, you, my life now is about following you and honouring you. We give ourselves, first of all, to the Lord. But then Paul says that the churches up in Macedonia, they'd also, by the will of God, given themselves to us. That means they've given themselves to Paul and his apostolic team. These local churches had bought in to an apostolic vision that Paul and his team carried. Um, they gave themselves to it. That's why they urgently pleaded with Paul that they could somehow be involved in supporting the church in Jerusalem because they'd caught something of Paul's heart for the church beyond themselves, in other nations, for planting churches, for strengthening churches. They've given themselves to Paul and his team, to that apostolic vision. 
And that's what it means to be a church that's part of an apostolic family. It means we give ourselves to Jesus and then through apostolic ministry, we give ourselves to support and serve an apostolic vision for healthy churches in the nations of the world. And it's just such a privilege to do this. The Macedonians thought that it's a privilege to be involved. And so Paul appeals to the Corinthians and says, guys, are you on board too? Look what the guys in Macedonia are doing, how they're getting stuck in. What about you? I mean, you've got more resources than the Macedonians. What part could you play? How can you get involved? And Paul encourages them in all the ways that they excel in their church and in ministry. See also that they excel in this grace of giving so they can be part of supporting the guys in Jerusalem. In the same way, we get to do something together, whether in the Netherlands or England or Scotland or Brazil or France, wherever it is, we, we get to be part of something. We may not all go to Brazil, but we can be part of it. We can pray, we can contribute, we can encourage, we can believe for what God is going to do in these relationships that we have together. So I want to encourage all of us watching today, like the Corinthians, let's also be inspired by the example of these Macedonian churches in the first century to be part of something beyond ourselves. So how can we get involved? Let me just suggest three ideas for you. Firstly, be informed. Find out what's going on in our family of churches. Go to the website, um, read the blogs, listen to the podcast. Find out what's happening across the New Ground family of churches. Secondly, let me encourage you to pray. We can all pray. Um, pray for church plants, pray for leaders, pray for the team that's heading this up, pray for new initiatives and new doors to open, pray that God would open doors for new grounds, pray in your churches for all that we're doing together. And finally, when there are moments to give, be generous. This was ultimately what Paul was encouraging the church in Corinth um, about, to excel in the grace of giving, to support the church in Jerusalem. Guys, we're about something together, and together we can do a lot, um, but it all needs resourcing. And your contribution makes a difference. The Macedonians didn't have much, but what they gave made a massive difference. And somehow together we can make a difference in what we're doing in the nations of the world. But all of that starts with a heart response. Paul says, the Macedonians first of all gave themselves to the Lord and then also to us. It starts in the heart, giving ourselves to what Jesus is doing on the earth and then giving ourselves to this family of churches that we're part of. Jesus' great commission is to make disciples to the ends of the earth. And I want you to know that we as a core team are utterly committed to that goal, to make disciples through healthy churches in different nations around the world. It's an incredible vision to give ourselves to. So let me also make an appeal to you today as you're watching this in your churches don't sit on the edges. We can do so much more together. You can be involved, you can contribute, you can play, you can play a part supporting and praying for churches in other towns, cities and nations, giving, being informed, encouraging. There's so many ways to get involved. And as we do that, we're going to believe that God is going to do incredible things amongst us. God bless you all in the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus.